finding him forever. I'm finding him now. I'm only doing this because I want to find more friends. You want to find more, more worms? No, they're called friends. It's 85 degrees, and every piece of mechanical equipment that I own is broken, except for my big tractor, which I can't get into the garden up here by the house. So we're back to the wheelbarrow. So we're going to be planting some things today, and for all my planting, I do kind of a back to Eden method. I do a lot of wood chips and things like that. And then I put fresh compost into the areas where I'm going to plant. And then once the, the plants get growing, you know, 12 inches or so, then I'll come and wood chip right up to the stem. So put wood chips in there. Keeps the weeds down and stuff like that. I don't mind some weeds in the garden, but we try to keep it as clean as possible. So so I'm putting uh, compost around the, uh, the trellises here and a few piles where I'm going to plant some squash, zucchini, stuff like that uh, around this area, kind of fill it in. And then we're going to be planting our tomatoes. So uh, we'll plant over here first. This should be a lot of trellis type things. Looks like I have a bunch of old seeds. I might try these ones, these Wisconsin pickle. I think I'll try those plant all these up by the house it's kind of a shaded area and then we'll do some cucumbers and beans out here on the uh, teepee trellis all right so the plan is uh, we've got two different kinds of beans here so we'll do this half with one kind and the other half with another kind <clears throat> hopefully it works out that way anyway and then usually what I do is just find a piece of wood chip stick it on and make a steak. And surprisingly, this paper uh, packet will stay here <laughs> and you'll still be able to read it all summer. Uh, I have one from last year still stuck to a stick over there, I'll show you. I like planting beans, they're, they're fun, they grow quick. Beans you can plant pretty deep, and this this compost is is nice. It'll hold quite a bit of water around the seeds, so it's actually really good for for sprouting. These are pole beans. A pole bean. There's two different kinds of beans. Usually a pole and a bush. The pole beans are going to need a trellis, and they they will uh, trellis up on our teepee here. And they'll, these will get pretty pretty tall. It depends on the, the, the variety that you're using, but a lot of these pole beans, they'll grow four, five, six feet or even taller if they have good weather and water and everything. I was having trouble finding zucchini seeds this year. Everywhere I went, they didn't have any. So even though my gardener was out for a while, I think he's got some in stock now, but... So zucchinis normally, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it any way you want. But generally I make kind of a hill. And the zucchinis are going to, you know, the, they're going to take up a huge space. So, And I'll throw two seeds in each hill. Um, just gives me a better chance if one of the seeds doesn't, doesn't germinate, then I've got a chance of another one. Unless I'm running low on seeds or something. But yeah, there's, there's last year's paper <laughs> paper seed packet still lasted a summer a fall and a winter and it's still still there and I can still see what it is so see my gardener even makes awesome seed packets we'll do some pickling cucumbers on kind of a quarter of this and then the rest of it I'm gonna do the uh, straight eight straight eights are 
grown them quite a, quite a few other times. They're kind of a good all-around uh, cucumber, so. This is the strawberry patch, and right up against the house here, we've got this uh, invisible trellis, the fishing line trellis. So we're going to plant some peas along here. So this was planted as a uh, the strawberries were planted as more of a cover crop in this area, just to keep this area covered, keep weeds down. A friend of ours gave gave us a few plants, and they just took took hold over here, and they've they've, they've kind of gone crazy. So uh, it's it's perfect though, keeps the weeds down in this area, and produces some strawberries for us. So we're actually going to plant these peas behind the trellis, and they'll grow up the back of it. So this is another trellis idea that is. Uh, works really well. This is a fishing line, high, kind of high strength fishing line, tied in between some two by fours that I ripped down into inch and a half by inch and a half, I think. Um, and uh, man, this thing has been here for years, and it's still, still going strong. The fishing line is still strong, and everything. I mean, it's only, it only cost me the cost of a few two by fours, and then the fishing line so it was a very cheap trellis and, and uh, this fishing line is perfect for peas and beans and cucumbers and all that stuff to climb up uh, it's worked out really well for us all the peas sugar snap peas are planted and they'll they'll climb up this is an eight foot trellis so it uh, it's got it's got some good height to it they don't they don't usually reach all the way to the top but uh, the peas will grow up into this area here they'll fill up this wall pretty good so Well, I got the tractor running, <laughs> so this is going to be a lot better, a lot easier for me to get some compost out here. So next we have uh, planting tomatoes. So uh, when I plant tomatoes, uh, I generally do the same thing every year. I don't use uh, really trellises or tomato cages anymore at all. I pretty much just use stakes. These are all pallet stakes ripped into two or three inch strips, uh, just depending on the, the type of pallet. So some of these are, are a little thicker, some are thinner, some are taller, some are shorter. Uh, but these are generally what I use. I also have a few of these bamboo things. I think I got these on, on sale some at some point and grabbed a few of them. And they, they lasted a little while, but they've broken. They're a lot shorter than they used to be. Uh, and so these aren't, these aren't a great buy. I wouldn't invest too much in these. Uh, generally, tomatoes are a, a vine, basically. I mean, that's the, where they originated. They are a vining type plant. They, don't, they need some kind of support. Uh, most varieties do. And so... Uh, you have to do something. So what I'll do is put a stake in the ground. We're going to clear some of these wood chips away in this area here along the garage. We're going to just plant a row of, of tomatoes along here. We'll plant a, a stake in the ground. We'll put a pile of compost and we'll plant a tomato plant right in the middle. I've got a bunch of, uh, of uh, started uh, or starts here that I got, uh, various kinds. Uh, these are mostly aromas. I've got some cherries and I've got a bunch of uh, some kind of hybrid uh, sandwich tomato. We'll get this, uh, this line of tomatoes planted first, and then we'll get out into the bigger patch over here. We'll get that prepped, and we'll get them planted out there as well. So I've got a mark on my shovel here that gives me some spacing. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, probably about two feet between tomato plants. And then I also am using this to measure my distance off of the garage. So everything will stay nice and straight. So as you peel this away, you can see, you know, the bottom layer, 
this was a really thick layer of wood chips last year so a lot of them have broken down underneath the top layer stays pretty dry it dries out pretty quickly and then they they kind of stay intact for for quite a few years but the the bottom layer stays moist you know just about an inch down and you get some really really nice soil worms and stuff like that break all that down and so we'll add some fresh compost every year of course All right, so next is this patch along the pig pasture. So I have a, a path that goes down here, and then there's a patch between the, the path uh, and the pig pen right here. So I'm gonna quickly run the tiller over this. Uh, I'm not gonna run it deep, I'm just gonna run it super, uh, super shallow, mainly just to knock all these weeds down uh, real quick across the top and kind of level it out. There's also some rabbit manures and beddings and things in here I wanna kick around a little bit, so. Well, the tomatoes are all planted. So I did end up throwing these uh, little thin bamboo uh, stakes in here. Uh, I'll take those out and put some better ones in, but I just ran out and I don't have anything for these ones. So, so we ended up with 75 total tomato plants in here. And so that should be usually what we go for between 50 and 100, uh, somewhere around there. And that uh, gives us a pretty good supply for canning and other things. We've got the teepees all planted. We have the peas up by the house all planted. We've got onions in those two raised beds. We've got potatoes in this one. And all that's left is this big bed here that's gonna be various kinds of bell peppers. And then I have a, a row that I'm gonna plant in here that will be carrots and uh, some other stuff like that. Well, just about everything is in the ground here in the garden. And I've got a few other random uh, places around here that I'm gonna plant as well as uh, one of our Baker production gardens that's uh, coming up. I hope to get out there and plant that tomorrow, and so I'll take you guys along for that as well. But one of the things that, uh, one of the things that we learned early on with gardening is to garden with a purpose. We try to pick out the things that we eat the absolute most of. So we started paying attention to like, what, what are we buying at the grocery store every week? What are the things that were recipes that, or things that we're making on a weekly basis or, or at least every other week? And for us, we used that. That was our, our guide as to what we needed to grow. 
Uh, for our family, it's a lot of potatoes, a lot of onions, a lot of tomatoes, a lot of bell peppers, um, things like that. We do, we will eat a lot of fresh peas and things like that. We always like gr uh, growing those. Beans are great for us to uh, gar grow and, and they're easy to dry and store for chilies and things like that. Uh, cucumbers are more of a fresh thing that we'll eat, you know, throughout the year. We don't do a lot of preserving those, although I do try pickles, the different recipes of pickles every year, and we do use a lot of pickles. So, um, so that's one of the things that we, uh, that we try. But we try to focus especially on the things that we're, we're using. Uh, one of the mistakes I made at the beginning of, of gardening was just growing all these different things all the time. So I would just go to the store or go on, on my gardener's website and just pick, you know, 50 different varieties of all these different, I want to try that, I want to try that, 50 different varieties of tomatoes and all these different things I want to grow. And look how pretty that looks and how cool that looks. And, but we didn't use half of it. I mean, most of it went to waste. Most of it would go to the animals, go to the chickens, or just, just waste. So gardening with a purpose is important uh, to, to get the most out of the, the effort. I mean, this takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to garden. It's not free. Um, you know, there is some, some minute expense that goes into it, but it's not free as far as your time goes. You gotta water things, you gotta plant things, you gotta prepare space, you got you know, it takes, takes labor. Um, and so you want to make sure that all that time you're spending in it is going to be returned in savings at the grocery store and healthier food for your family. That's the two goals of a garden. And so uh, that's, that's what we shoot for here. We have 75 tomatoes here, and, and this is probably even not enough for us. We, we could, uh, with pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, salsas, tomato paste, and chilies, and all the other things that we eat a lot of, uh, we could can probably 150 tomato plant you know uh, tomatoes that we would get from probably 150 tomato plants probably double this uh, to really supply 100 percent of our needs throughout the year and so every year we expand our gardens a little bit every year we have a little bit more space we try to you know plant more and more uh, tomatoes and more and more things every year so that we can try to provide our, our needs that's that's our goal is to be 100 percent sustainable as far as the things that we can produce here and so uh, we keep working towards that uh, every year. So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, tagging along for the planting of the garden. There'll be more to come. I've got, I've got a few more things to finish up here. I'll take you guys along for that. Of course, if you're still looking for seeds, uh, MI Gardener is getting some more things back in stock, I noticed. So check out his site. There's a link in the description. You save 10 cents a packet. So they're only 89 cents a packet if you use the link in the description, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, best seeds on the market, I think. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to tag along with the SSL Family Dad channel. We'd love to have you. Lots of gardening and DIY things, uh, projects and farming and other things coming up. So we'd love to have you tag along for all those. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.